for it. Follow up with, did the CTU, was this payback from the CTU leadership because Dr. Alwadi wanted schools to open during COVID? Every single administration um, has to be prepared for transition. And uh, my administration is no different in that regard. Transition is difficult um, for everyone. Um, but as has already been articulated, I don't know how many times you're allowed to quote Tupac. Um. Okay, everyone, come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mix. Like, share, subscribe, like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. It's free, free 99. Let's get my likes up, everyone. The likes are not matching the views. Views are not matching the likes. Like, 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 like. Share, 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 share this video. And most importantly, drop the comments and listen to this video from beginning to end. As you can see what this video is going to be about. Yes, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson. Is he a one-term mayor or not? Doesn't look good, you guys. I'm going to hop right into the topic. And I'm going to be sharing a screen with you guys as well. Based on what I heard here... And her have been hearing from the elders who voted for him, which are the most reliable voting base. They are not too happy with Mr. Brandon Johnson at all and won't be voting for him again unless things turn around drastically. To my understanding, he just he's been in office for about 100 days. And I know people are probably going to say, hmm, well, give him some time, give him this and that. But this, you know what, you guys, it's so much been going on political season wise. Thus far, remember, presidential election is next year. Um, then you have his primaries, and then you have some local elections that's going on as well, I believe. Um, and I'll, it's just, it's, it's that season, it's that season. But before I continue with my commentary discussion and opinion of this topic, you guys, I'm on a minute vacation. So I'm bringing this <laughs> information to you while on vacation. I'm in, a, in the South. A former slave states, yes, a family reunion, Arkansas, and of course I have my child with me, and um, he's not really feeling this. The heat is heating. <laughs> it's different from the heat in the north. The heat in the north is normally, in my opinion, a lot of humidity, but this heat out here is a different type of heat, it's, and it's, it's very historic for me, um, in, um, in my opinion, based off of what I've observed thus far, and terms of um just the <clears throat> the area we're in and wow it's just it's wow it's wow <laughs> um but yeah so but i might bring some more content to you guys regarding my mini vacation slash family reunion and um you know share some video and some photos with you guys but this is I don't know. This is this is like I said. It's pretty historic, history-wise. I um, was talking to my child, and I basically said something about it being culture. He was like, "What is culture? What is so culture about being a slave?" You know, he's my child is a different breed. So hey, you know, he's in a public school system that's far better, way better than I was in coming up. So um, yeah, he articulates his points and his thoughts. Very well, very well spoken, immaculate vocabulary, but he just basically was like, Mom, you sound ridiculous. There's nothing cultural yes. about area and just the aesthetics of everything looking, you know, slavish. Rich. But yeah, so back to Brandon Johnson, you guys. But yeah, the voters are not too happy with him in terms of the elders. Let me go ahead and share a screen with you guys, and then I'll come back with more of my commentary, reaction, and opinion. Hey, back from the CTU leadership because Dr. Alwadi wanted schools to open during COVID. Every single administration um, has to be prepared for transition. And uh, my administration is no different in that regard. Transition is difficult um, for everyone, um, but as has already been articulated, I don't know how many times you're allowed to quote Tupac um, in a press conference, but you can't always go by the things that you hear. Right, real eyes, right, real eyes, and real lies. That's also Tupac Shakur. Next question. Okay, you guys, according to WTTW.com, and I'm just going to go over some excerpts of this article. Johnson walks political tightrope in first 100 days as allies press him to deliver and critics seize on missteps. And in my opinion, what they mean by allies and critics, 
the his constituents, the people who voted for him. And to my understanding, Chicago did not have a choice. But Chicago, if you all are listening, anyone, and I'm going to go ahead and run a poll. Um, if you were to grade Paul, excuse me, not Paul Ballas, if you were to grade Brandon Johnson today, what would you give him? I'm going to go ahead and take it there, you guys. I'm going to be radical with my poll, and you'll see. What would you give Brandon Johnson? You're going to have only two choices when I run this poll. So at this point, passive-aggressive, I guess you could say, with my polling on him, because these are our lives are in these politicians' hands. I don't care who it is or where you're at, from the federal level to the local level. So they need to be held accountable, and they need to be doing the work for the people who got them in office, period. Not doing the work for their party, not doing the work for an agenda that they see in place years to come. How about doing the work for the constituents who got you into office? You know, work for them. Let me continue. Mayor Brandon Johnson spent his first 100 days in office walking a political tightrope, facing intense pressure to live, deliver victories for the progressive voters who launched him into office while critics question his ability to lead a badly fractured city struggling to recover from the ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic that served to spotlight Chicago's deeply entrenched problems of crime, poverty, homelessness, and in- inequity. Johnson, a former middle school teacher, told WTTW News on Thursday's Chicago Tonight that he would give his administration an A minus. Oh, and I'm going to give him a grade. Too. I'm going to run a poll to about a grade. An A minus, at least for style, with much more work to be done. For style. Also, oh, he, he's being facetious, you guys. He's being funny. People, come on. Um, Brandon Johnson, I was pushing for you. Um, To give you an opportunity and you can check out some of my videos, you guys. Yes, I was pushing for it because the choice was Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson. But prior to it, like in the primaries, honestly, I was pushing for um, Willie Wilson. Yes, if I was in Chicago, if I lived or resided in Chicago, which I do not, I would have voted for Willie Wilson. And in my opinion, I believe Willie Wilson should have been mayor of Chicago. But Chicago only had Willie Wilson was pushed out. And it, the runoff was between Paul Vallis and Brandon Johnson. So, you know, Chicago, the makeup of the city, demographics, culture, and race-wise and all of that. You, you just go ahead and go to Google. You'll see all of that. So, But Brandon Johnson came on top because a lot of black people voted for Brandon Johnson. When, a, when they even went to the polls, very skeptical, you know, very skeptical of Brandon Johnson be, having the ability and possessed the ability to do the job and wondering how did he become a front runner all of a sudden. So that's what everybody, everybody felt like he was placed there. And, and this is based off of what I've heard um, throughout the, the voting process and the running for the mayor process and all of that. This is what I heard from the streets or from people uh, on the ground. Like, where did he come from? Somebody placed him there. You know, he's a political pawn. And so, uh, but people still gave him the opportunity to thinking like, okay, you know what? Maybe he'll get in there when a lot of people went against what they truly believe. So, you know what, you guys moving forward, I I just encourage you all vote how the heck you want to vote. And although Chicago, in my opinion, really didn't have a choice between the two, it's like the lesser of two evils. Paul Vallis came from a deep, deep blue machine. You got, he came from the daily camp. He ruined, based off of (laughs) research and review, they say he ruined the Philadelphia school system after he ruined Chicago public school system. So him becoming mayor, he really completely ruined the Chicago public school system. So now he wanted to reside, preside as mayor over the city of Chicago. And Chicago, in my opinion, they were like, heck to the no. So, but they didn't have a choice. A lot of people, in my opinion, really wanted Willie Wilson. I just don't understand what happened because he had a strong chance as well. His percentage was up there. But I couldn't believe he came in and just threw a wrench in it, so to speak, which split that Willie Wilson and the Willie Wilson, Paul Vallis, and Brandon Johnson. Perhaps Brandon Johnson threw a wrench in Willie Wilson's because, that you know what, that's what I'm going to say. So it was, it's just like the options are far worse nowadays uh, and I'm not going to say nowadays it's just as c- people continue to wake up live learn grow and just 
think about the state of this entire country, people are getting fed up when it comes to the political officials running for office. It's really nothing to choose from, in my opinion. Okay, so the article further cites what we have been able to do effectively is to bring people together. Johnson said, it's what I campaigned on and what I promised. Wow, I don't see it, to be honest. Poised to be the most progressive mayor in the city's history, Johnson has also sought to make good on his campaign promise to create a Chicago for all by building consensus before making tough decisions. An approach that has confused and frustrated some Chicagoans long accustomed to mayors governing by flat and asking for neither permission nor forgiveness. Wow. I'm not a dictator, Johnson has said repeatedly after taking office when pressed by reporters about criticism that he is not moving decisively enough to address Chicago's woes. And I've heard this too from some elders on the ground in Chicago that like, what is he doing? They thought that he were he was hiding from the media and press conferences at first. Like, and they and when he do um, prevail himself and probably do an interview here and there, it's just not making sense to them. You know, and I think in one particular, and I'm paraphrasing, I, some type of crime was being done. Some kid, some some young teens or kids carjacking, and I think someone called them. We're just gonna say thugs. I'm paraphrasing thugs or this and that, and or something they called them. And it was some black people that called these kids that. And he basically stated, "Don't call them that. They're you know because remember he was a." He's a former school teacher and, you know, part of CTU. So, but I heard from an elder, what the heck can you call them? They, what they are, a bunch of thugs, a bunch of reckless, whatever, you know? So, eh, I don't know. The streets are not feeling him in Chicago and they are like, no, nah, heck no. Nah. So will he be a one-term mayor? A lot of people are saying that. This dynamic that has existed in the city of Chicago for so long that has left schools closed, mental health clinics shut down, a transportation system that, quite frankly, has not been reliable and safe. You have systems that have not been built around care, Johnson said. The same old tire politics that we have moved away from. That's what the city of Chicago is embracing in this moment. I guess 100 days, wrong one built in a day, so to speak. I guess you know that saying, how that saying goes. For much of his first month in office, Johnson has used a bully pulpit to serve as his hype man, frequently proclaiming Chicago the greatest freaking city in the world and extolling the soul of Chicago. Johnson has embraced the spotlight at, at events like Lollapalooza and the Sunos Music Festival, often deploying his deep resonance laugh while greeting Chicagoans, but he has also deflected tough times, tough questions with talking points and canned phrases, routinely promising to make Chicago a better, stronger, and safer city without offering details. Yeah, he should stop with the rhetoric, you know, he should stop with the sayings and all of that, the, you know, because if your actions are matching up, not if your actions are not matching your words or your words are not matching your actions, then your words are just meaningless. Simply that, meaningless. Johnson's work addressing the colossal um, challenges facing Chicago is a work in progress. Several high-profile appointments are pending, and Johnson has less than two months to craft his first spending plan, which he has said will include a down payment on promises to invest in working-class Chicagoans. We shall see. The mayor has said he is looking for department heads who are competent, collaborative, and compassionate, but offer few specifics. Johnson, the city's 57th mayor and only the second black man to be elected to lead Chicago, took office in the midst of a humanitarian crisis with thousands of migrants arriving in Chicago from the southern border on buses paid to pay for by Texas Governor Greg Abbott, a Republican. Johnson has spent much of his first 100 days in office grappling with the daily arrival of dozens of migrants looking for food and shelter at a time when the city's shelters are bursting at the seams. Sure is. Straining the city's social safety net and exacerbating the tension between Chicago's Black and Latino communities. And all more than 13,000 migrants have made their way to Chicago since the buses began arriving on August 31st, 2022, when Johnson took office in mid-May, approximately 500 immigrants who are all in the country legally 
are after request the asylum were being forced to sleep on the floor of police stations across the city since Johnson took the oath of office more than 90 buses filled with as many as 50 immigrants each have arrived in mid-July Johnson vowed to move the 950 people living at police stations to permanent shelters as quickly as possible during an ongoing probe into whether or not one officer assigned to a west side police station had sexual um, contact with at least one of the migrants officials have yet to substantiate the complaint or identify a victim okay you guys what are your thoughts what are your thoughts oh my goodness you heard brandon johnson in that clip let me get this because he quoting tupac oh my goodness i know the elders are living quoting tupac again Yes, Brandon Johnson is quoting Tupac. I know the elders are pissed, highly pissed, highly pissed. You heard it in that clip. Real eyes, real lies, real lies. I don't even know if the media understands that. I don't even know if the media is really understanding that. They bow down. They need to Google Tupac, those who are not informed, <laughs> um, the people who are interviewing him at that press conference yes but i can guarantee you regardless if they are aware or informed or not about tupac they don't give up they don't give up they don't give up <laughs> they don't they want to know who what when where why you heard the questions they asked about the firing of someone um due to the cv due to covid the, the different i guess decisions that person that particular person made during covid you see what the article was stating about his first hundred days and he basically saying he'll give himself uh his administration i guess an a for style man this is not time to be jokey jokey brandon johnson one term mayor is what they're calling you now yeah you heard him brandon johnson is quoting tupac He's quoted Tupac, you guys. He's quoted Tupac. And I know this is not a laughing matter because the city of Chicago is is mayhem in so many sectors. You have education, you have healthcare, you have finance, you have crime, you, you oh, it's just housing, um, mortgage crisis, all of that. Come on now. Come on now, Brandon Johnson. You all I have to say. You guys, you guys have the choice. You can vote. You don't have to vote. Or you can do your less of the two evils. You can vote for another party if that's an option. But as I stated before in previous videos, I you guys know how I feel about this. It's like, oh no. It's middle, middle fingers in the air when it comes to this voting process from locally to federally. I, I don't care because it hasn't benefited me or my community as a whole. And, and I've been living this long without it. You know, in turn, when I say without it, meaning receiving a substantial benefit from voting. I, I, I haven't. Directly, I haven't. I haven't. I've seen other people, other people who are in positions of authority and, and power and who have set their own families up politically. Huh. They're fine. They're fine while the black community is in ruins. They're fine. They have some money. They have some wealth. They have some stat. They have. They. They're fine. So, but as a whole, as a community, no, I'm not seeing that. So, Brandon Johnson, mm, mm, mm. no, you guys. So, I got a poll. We'll be running. Go ahead, head on over there and vote. While Brandon Johnson is quoting Tupac, what are the constituents doing at this point um, for strategizing for who you may put in there next time for mayor? You guys need to be on the ground and, and, and building somebody up, getting behind somebody to get up in there and defeat him next time around. Because in my opinion, I strongly believe he will be a one-term mayor. But... While you all say he may be a one-term mayor, for those who will be participating in the voting process in the city of Chicago, you guys need to be galvanizing. You guys need to be coming together and possibly getting someone, some, a strong prospect, a strong candidate to um, <clears throat> go up against him and win. And you guys need to be raising money to do that because it takes the money. So, yeah. That article, um, you can go ahead and read it at your leisure. Those are just some excerpts. There's more to that article. I just wanted to hop on here really quickly to go over this because this is political season. Keep your eyes and ears to the street. It's going down all across the United States, pretty much in these major cities like Chicago, like Los Angeles, like Philadelphia. Wow, it's it, it's been quite interesting, I, I guess, so to speak. 
and it just seems like things are kind of getting worse or whatever but what are your thoughts what are your thoughts do you believe brandon johnson uh, will be a one-time mayor or not i'm going to run that poll i'm actually going to run two polls you guys but but yeah this is this is quite interesting and like i said chicago did not have a choice it was between paul ballas and brandon johnson but remember paul ballas was over to chicago public schools and destroyed it literally and he, I guess, was moving as superintendent from city to city, destroying all the major, in my opinion, <laughs> school systems. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I believe um, Willie Wilson, if if either Paul Ballas or Brandon Johnson would not have been um, thrown in there for mayor, Willie Wilson would have won. Um, and a lot of people were pushing for Willie Wilson. A lot of the elders were pushing for Willie Wilson, in my opinion, to what I, it, it, based off of my understanding, what I heard from the street. So, but yeah, drop a comment, drop a comment in the comment section. They are calling him I'm a one term mayor like Lori Lightfoot. That's what I've heard from a couple elders. And, you know, like I said, the elders are more, more, reli uh, more of a reliable voting base. So this is going to be interesting. And just because the elders are in their, what, 60s and 70s and 80s, heck, they they may continue to live to see another 10, 15 years. So their vote matters because they're going to the polls. They are going to the polls. So Chicago overall, whether you voted or not, I will be, like I said, running a poll. Uh, and I need you to go head on over to the community section and vote, 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 vote. What do you give Brandon Johnson as of today? His first, what, 100 days in office. What do you give him? It's going to be two options on this poll. I'm just, yeah, I'm going there. I'm taking, taking it there. Um, he was once a school teacher. Heck, <laughs> since he was once a school teacher, we, we're only going to give him two options. Two options. I'm going in there. I'm taking it there. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. I didn't want to keep you all on. Like I said, I'm on a, like a mini vacation type of family reunion vibe. I might be doing a video on it. Uh, my phone storage is getting pretty full. I don't have my other device with me with more storage in it. So I don't know you guys, but um, like I said earlier, this little uh, trip to the South, and to my understanding, I was told I was brought here as a child, but I don't remember. So just seeing these huge trees that's hundreds of years old, and I'm sure a lot of our ancestors, when I'm, I'm speaking to my melanated community at the moment now, you guys, when I speak about our ancestors hanging from these trees, it's just, it's so mind boggling. So it's like I weep on the inside. This is, like I said, it's it's very historic. I stand correct. It's very historic. Cause my, like I said, I said, oh, this is culture. And my son like, mommy, how's this culture? Like he basically corrected me. It's nothing culture about being a slave. There's nothing culture about being hung from a tree. There's nothing culture about being, um, judged and and just being forbidden to live a life a natural life so i was like you know what you're absolutely right so but i will talk to you guys soon like this video share this video bye